We're here to celebrate uh, two marriage equality milestones, one for Cook County and the other for the state of Illinois. I hope you've had a chance to take a look at um, what we have up here, our maps and what have you. It's very telling, very telling as to what what's going on in Illinois, what's going on in Cook County as far as marriages are concerned. Tomorrow, tomorrow, is the sixth anniversary of the day that Governor Pat Quinn signed marriage equality into law in Illinois. Yeah. And by the end of the year, we will have issued 15,000 marriage licenses to same-sex couples in Cook County. Just think about that. The first marriages were almost exactly six years ago, after a judge ruled because of serious life-threatening medical reasons, there was no excuse for Vernita and Pat, Ron and Ken, Elvie and Chalice to wait to get married. And this office made sure they got their marriage licenses and were married as soon as possible. Since then, nearly 15,000 same-sex couples from 47 states and a dozen countries have come to Cook County to get married. Isn't that interesting? We're a good county and a good state. <laughs> LGBT activists have been fighting for equality for a very long time. It wasn't easy and it certainly wasn't simple. Many people are here today. They've worked for years so that lesbian and gay couples can enjoy this basic human right. Today we celebrate, we honor, and thank those who fought the good fight so that we could get to these milestones today. When I state what you did in this fight, stand up so we can acknowledge you. Some of you protested. Some of you in this very building. You filed lawsuits, sometimes against this very office. By the way, I wasn't here. You lobbied and went into your communities. You talked to churches, sponsored, co-sponsored, and supported legislation. You signed legislation. You helped get people married, and you officiated marriages, and you got married. If I left anybody out, stand up. All of you should be standing up. You are part of this. You are part of this. <laughs> this was your victory, and nobody can deny this, and this was our victory. Now, I want to mention one of the great activists who was instrumental in this and many battles for LGBT equality over the years, and that's my friend Rick Gar Garcia. Now, Rick really wanted to be here today, and he could have really told the story. Everybody knows Rick, and they know what kind of activist he is. Not was, but is. He's with his partner who is fighting a very serious health challenge. So let's keep him in our hearts and prayers today. The great Bayard Rustin, he was Dr. King's right-hand man. He organized the March on Washington, and he was a gay black man in a terrible time where gay men were shunned. But he was brilliant. You should read his story. Um, actually, I saw his story, I believe it was on Netflix or one of those, wonderful story about him. And I'm going to quote him. He said, if I do not fight bigotry, wherever it is, bigotry is thereby strengthened. And to the degree that it is strengthened, it will thereby have the power to turn on me, end of quote. Marriage equality was an important and necessary fight. But equality is threatened everywhere. And it's our duty, the people in this room and others, to fight bigotry and discrimination wherever we find it, wherever we see it, wherever we hear about it. 
We need to protect marriage equality and we need to fight for non-discrimination laws so that people who get married on Sunday don't have to get fired on Monday. It happens. We need to speak out against harassment and murders of all trans women all over the country. We need to stand up for gay and lesbian and trans kids who get bullied. These are our fights, like racism and voter suppression are. Some people might say marriage isn't so important. It's so middle class and class arrangement, but it's a big deal. And if Joe Biden was here, he would say it was a big effing deal. It is a big deal. Whether it's the family you were born into or the family you make or both. The only people who believe marriage is not important never had it denied to them. Never had it denied to them. It's certainly important in my office. We witness marriage equality here every day. When gay couples, lesbian couples, straight couples come to my office for their marriage license, they don't get into the lesbian and gay line. We don't have one. <laughs> Everybody is equal here. Now, I need to promote one of the other functions of my office, a commercial, and that has to do with elections administration and voter registration. Uh, a recent UCLA study found that more than one in five Americans who are LGBT are not registered to vote. We got to do better, folks. We got to help them and, and let them understand how important it is for them to have their voice heard. Who is most often targeted in voter su suppression? People of color. And those voters include LGBT. Americans. In some states, voter ID laws require that a person's documentation match their birth assigned gender. This creates a barrier to the ballot for transgendered voters, and we won't let that happen here. But you must be registered to vote. If you're not registered to vote, or you're sure you're not, don't worry. I won't embarrass you here, but I know everybody here is registered to vote. <laughs> I'll turn my head. <laughs> I know you are. I want to um, ask that um, our first speaker that's going to come today was one of the firsts. I like firsts. Pat, you like first? I like first. Okay, I was talking to that Pat, but that's the Pat I want to come up. Pat Beward um, was one of our first couples to marry. She and her wife, Bernita. Bernita uh, was introduced to me by Richard Streetman. I never got to really know her, but everybody who knew her says the same thing, what a wonderful person she was. Mm -hmm. Pat, could you give us some snippets? Oh my gosh. Uh, Bernita used to say that when she was uh, coming up that the word gay and marriage were never even used in the same sentence. She had no idea at the time that she would be the first with me and it was an honor and it really meant a lot to her and it meant a lot to me for many reasons. I only had Bernita around for a few short months after our marriage, but I'll tell you that when I had to settle her affairs and I had to make those telephone calls and say, I am Bernita Gray's wife, I need for you to send me or take care of, it made a difference. It made a difference in the way it treated me and it made a difference in what I was able to accomplish. So I know she's smiling down. Yes, she is. I know she's smiling down. I know this, this means a lot to her. And we uh, cannot thank our legislature or our governor, Pat Quinn. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pat. Um, the next Pat that's going to come up to speak <laughs> needs no introduction. Um, I had the opportunity to work with this Pat uh, in Springfield, and he signed all of my legislation <laughs> when I was there because I was on the right side of all issues the all the time. Yeah, very good. All the time. So why don't you all put your hands together and stand, and let's hear from Governor Pat Quinn. Yeah. Well, I want to 
thank uh, our excellent county clerk, Karen Yarborough, who is also a state representative at an important time in Amer American and Illinois history. And I also want to acknowledge Linda Chapalavia, who is our Veterans uh, Service Director in our state of Illinois, very important job. But Linda and Karen were both in the legislature in November of uh, 2013. And uh, it was a key moment for democracy, yes. not just for Illinois, but for our whole country. Uh, we needed to have a vote by the elected representatives of the people on marriage equality. Uh, the bill had passed the Senate, uh, but finally called in the House uh, in November of that year. And the vote uh, was a very solemn day. Mm -hmm. uh, there were excellent speeches, yeah. uh, I thought, by advocates, but there wasn't the usual raucous yelling and screaming you see down there in the House of Representatives. <laughs> uh, people understood that they were, this was a day in history uh, for our country because we were the only state in the Midwest where the legislature, through the elected process, was ad addressing this issue of marriage equality. And so once the uh, speeches were done, the vote was taken, it passed. There was a glorious celebration on the floor of the House. It continued over to the governor's office. We had more celebration. Yeah, yeah. And then that night, to the governor's mansion, uh, we had a party. And uh, that night, there was a representative, Sam Yingling. He was a rookie, first year in the legislature. He came down. I was uh, in my office down in the mansion. We hadn't uh, had the party begin yet. And he asked for permission for me to ask his, at that time, partner uh, for his hand in marriage. His partner was driving down from Chicago. And I said, well, of course, but I don't think you should do it uh, over in the corner there. Why don't you go up to the second floor of the mansion under the gaze of the portrait of Abraham Lincoln, and you can propose to Lowell at that time. And that's exactly what happened. He got down on his knee, he had his ring, and he asked Lowell for his hand in marriage. And I, I think all of us who were there that night, and then a short time later, a couple weeks, we went over to the University of Illinois at Chicago at the Forum before a couple thousand people mm -hmm. to sign the bill into law that Illinois made the law for marriage equality and made, uh, I think, uh, our state one that was a leader when it comes to uh, equality and liberty. Uh, when the Supreme Court, a year or two later, uh, decided that liberty in our Constitution means that every person in every state had the right to marry the, one, the person they loved. And uh, it seemed to me that uh, when we signed the bill, I had 100 pence. And so, uh, have you ever tried to write your name? Uh, make sure <laughs> all 100 pens got in. Uh, but it happened. And we gave those pens out. There were plenty of customers for that. But uh, that day uh, that I signed the bill, uh, there's a passage from Corinthians. It says, love is patient, love is kind, love never fails. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Governor. I miss you. I can say that. <laughs> um, Chapa, why don't you come up and say, I know you don't want to. But anyway, uh, Chapa and I served in the house, and I'd just like to hear a few words from her. Um, she now has this great job as director of Veterans Affairs, and I'm so proud of her. Linda Chapa-Lavia. I'm more proud of you. Oh, well, I love you. Been a while. The fun thing is that uh, one of your colleagues back there was saying, I remember your speech. Because being a Roman Catholic, right, and having to stand up and let people know that even the Pope feels a certain way, right? Mm -hmm. Who am I to judge? And we're supposed to love everybody, right? That's the second commandment the Lord gives us. So I was very proud and very humbled to be able to get on that floor and speak my piece. Um, and in, in, in my new position as Director of Veterans Affairs, I don't think I can do enough to get into those communities of the LGBTQ and allow them the rights that they deserve for fighting for our country. So if anybody has any connections, please don't hesitate to talk to me afterwards. It's very important that everybody gets their rights 
especially those that have served this phenomenal country to give us our rights that That's we're right. even right now speaking. So That's thank right. you. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to uh, call Benny Montgomery up. Um, Benny, in his former life, uh, worked for Congressman Davis and um, spent a lot of time in Springfield putting the arm on people for all kinds of things. And so he's retired now, but he's not, he's still on the battlefield. Ben Montgomery. Thank you, Coach Diabro, and to Governor Pat Quinn. I didn't, I didn't know I was have to speak. I didn't know everything was going to be so formal. I thought this was a rally. <laughs> So, but I do want to talk about two things, um, Clerk Yarbrough. The Red Ribbon Cash Lottery Ticket. Okay. And also my impact on the marriage equality bill. Okay. Yeah. See, I was told that black legislators said down in Springfield that they didn't think that the black LGBTQ community cared about marriage mm -hmm. equality. Mm -hmm. I said, how mis mistaken they are. So the next day, I got on the phone and raised $1,800 to, That's right. to get a bus That's to right. take black LGBTQ people to Springfield mm -hmm. to lobby our legislators for this bill. Right. Not only do we come on a bus, Michael O'Connor got infinity to get a bus. Okay. People right. came on the train and they drove. That's right. It was about 80 of us down there and we all lobbied our black legislators mm -hmm. and we changed their minds. That's so right. it was through our efforts that this bill did get passed because oh. black legislators <laughs> were not on board. Yeah. But they got on board yeah. when they saw us. <laughs> the second thing, I, I am so grateful for Clerk Yarbrough, Dean State Representative Yarbrough. It's for the Red River Cash Lottery ticket that raises money for HIV and AIDS mm -hmm. for at-risk uh, at risk populations across the state of Illinois. And we had to really do some convincing because she did not like gambling. I don't like gambling, Benny. I said, but this is a good cause. The money would go for a good cause. She said, well, I'll do it if you can get State Senator Jackie Collins to get on board. Mm -hmm. Now that was a tough one. <laughs> she didn't like gambling either. But she said, Karen's on it. Okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. But needless to say, we did get that bill passed. And we do have the Red Ribbon Cash Lottery ticket that so far has raised $12 million in grants across the state of Illinois. And it is still going on. So remember to buy a Red Ribbon Cash Lottery ticket. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> One person can make a difference. So Commissioner Morrison is here, and I don't know why my phone is ringing, but uh, Commissioner Morrison is here, and I'd like you to hear from him. He's a brand new commissioner, and we couldn't be more proud of his efforts. Come on up. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Kevin Morrison. I represent the Northwest suburbs of the 15th District on the Cook County Board. Uh, in 2018, I had the honor of being elected the first openly LGBTQ uh, County Commissioner in Cook County history. It has been an honor over the past year to represent my community and all communities here in the county on the board, but I, I first want to start off by uh, recognizing all the incredible work Clerk Yarborough has done in this same year uh, as, as Clerk of Cook County. Uh, from working with the county board to help further language access to a 215,000 suburban Cook County residents, uh, to having events like this representing the LGBTQIA community. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, asexual. These are words that I never thought I'd have an opportunity to say out loud to you <coughs> in any form. You know, growing up in the, <coughs> I apologize. Growing up in the Northwest suburbs, I, I didn't know if I'd actually ever come out of the closet. And I want to share part of my story. You know, I knew from an early age that I wanted to work in helping improve communities, to be a public servant in any way, shape, or form. But growing up, I also never recognized any person who was openly LGBT achieve anything. 
I wasn't being taught about LGBTQ leaders who were actually able to have successful careers being out and open. And, and that was one of the reasons why throughout my high school, I, I wasn't out of the closet. It took the opportunity of going to DePaul University and studying LGBTQ studies to give me the confidence to finally come out of the closet to everyone. And I, I do want to bring up one of my mentors uh, through the LGBTQ studies program at DePaul, um, Beth Kelly, who was a crusader in the LGBTQ fight for equality. Uh, she was one of my professors. And I, I remember uh, learning under her that in Illinois, Illinois was the first state in the United States to get rid of our sodomy laws in 1962. We were a leader in the fight for LGBTQ rights from the very moment that those movements started forming. And it, it kind of hurt when we didn't become the first state to have marriage equality. But when we finally uh, achieved that hurdle, and thank you, Governor, and all the leaders in this room who helped make that possible, I, I can't tell you how inspiring that was to me, that our, our voices, that our families, that uh, the LGBTQ community could have the right to marry and live our lives freely and be with the persons that we love and have all those rights and protections. Um, when uh, DOMA and Prop 8 was being argued at the Supreme Court, I remember talking with Beth Kelly and she told me, you know, uh, Things move incredibly slowly for LGBTQ rights in the Supreme Court in the United States. You know, be hopeful, be optimistic, but honestly, it'll probably take another 10 to 20 years to even see those achievements. And when the Supreme Court came out in 2013 with such an incredible announcement, striking down DOMA, Prop 8, when that decision was so strong, I remember I was sitting in a bar. I was uh, on a study abroad in Ireland with uh, many uh, environmental students out of DePaul University. And I just burst into tears as I read that decision because I knew it was only a matter of time, years, two years to be exact, that we would have marriage equality and that would be the law of the United States of America. You know, this is a time of celebration, but I do want to recognize the fight is not over. There is so much left to be achieved. I just left a conference with LGBTQ leaders from all countries uh, in Washington, D.C. And I, I was speaking with a state representative who receives on average three death threats a month, and that's today in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, we are seeing uh, major issues, when it, especially when it comes to our trans women of color. Uh, there is so much work to do, and I know the leaders in this room are going to continue the fight with me, but it is incredible to come together and celebrate. We're almost at 15,000 marriages. That is incredible. <laughs> Before everyone leaves, I hope you take a look at this map. Okay, these maps here show you that our families are everywhere within the incredible county of Cook. Okay, we're in every family, every community. And it is incredible to see the changes in just my short lifetime. I'll be 30 in January, and so much has changed in that short amount of time. And I, I, I feel honored by all the people and the heroes who have fought, and many of which were already martyrs to this movement by the time I was born that helped make the rights that I have today a possibility. And I want to continue that fight to make sure that no disenfranchised community has to deal with hate and bigotry moving forward. And I'm so happy that we have an incredible clerk helping lead the fight. Thank you. Oh, thank you. The fight is not over yet. Where's Jim Scalzetti? Why don't you come up, Jim? Uh, Jim works in the clerk's office, and he does an incredible job. Yeah, you can give it up for Jim. <laughs> I'd like him to add his voice. He does a tremendous job for the clerk's office. I'm glad to have him. Jim? Thank you. Um, I want to say, uh, I was thinking of something back there. Like the the difference in in uh, work environments. Um, I remember it wasn't that long ago. Um, uh, uh, there was a company I was working for, um, just uh, down the street next to the merchandise mart. They're not there anymore. Um, when I joined that company, they were talking about the benefits, and they mentioned uh, they had domestic partner benefits, and. The person who was telling us about these benefits said, well, 
the union person isn't comfortable talking about that. If you want information, you have to go to HR. Oh, cool. mm -hmm. Contrast that to when uh, Clerk Yarbrough started here in <laughs> December, and uh, she comes into my office, my and she says, where's a picture of your husband? You have a husband, where's the picture? And she would not let up. And it, Wait a minute. It's He's not telling the story, right? He had a picture of his dog. Okay. <laughs> okay let's, not, let's not leave that out, okay? It, they're, they're both adorable. Um, but, but just the, the, the difference, um, because a lot of people are just conditioned to be afraid to, to show themselves. Uh, and their families. You know, a lot of people, uh, whether they're supporters or they're not, they don't approve of uh, same-sex marriage, they'll say, well, why do you need to uh, celebrate 15,000, 18,000? Why, why do you need to talk about six years since uh, marriage was signed, or seven years, whatever? Uh, they might say, well, what, what difference does it make? And I'll say, it makes plenty of difference. Um, it matters a lot to people who've had this right, like many rights, denied to them. It makes a big difference to people who throughout their existence have been bullied, beaten, and buried because of who they are and, or who they love. It makes a big difference to people who fought in the streets, in the state house, and in the courts for the right to marry. You know, a couple decades ago, people would snicker when you mention gay marriage. Um, even now, there's, there are clerks in some parts of the country who don't want to give marriage licenses to same-sex couples. There are legislators who are rewriting laws or the procedures for giving marriage licenses so that their county clerks don't have to give marriage licenses to same-sex couples. And they said we were going to change the definition of marriage. Um, so it's important um, to that, that we don't treat this like any other right or any other marriage license. Too many people have fought too hard for this to just treat it matter-of-factly. Um, people don't realize up until the 1960s, like Commissioner Morrison said, it was illegal to, to be gay or lesbian in the state of Illinois. Even after that, gays and lesbians could be rounded up at bars just because they were dancing with someone of the same sex, they were there, and because the clothes they were wearing didn't conform to the gender that the police officer thought they were. And the papers would publish the names of those people who were arrested. Um, then there was the devastation of AIDS. And again, it took demonstrations, die-ins, protests in the streets to get people, politicians and drug companies, to take notice. I can't help but think of all of the beautiful lives we lost all the promise that was cut short by AIDS. All those young people, many of them surely would have been amazed and delighted to be able to marry the ones they love. But marriage equality didn't come in time for them. We should honor them like we honor those who fought for marriage equality, including many of you here today. Ben, Michael, James, Patrick, Pat, everyone who I'm forgetting, who I haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet, thank you. We can't take it for granted. Today and every day, we've got the right to celebrate. We also owe it to the memory of pe people like Vernita Gray, Ron Dorfman, Chalice Gibbs, and the others who lived just long enough to marry their loved ones. Their love and their legacies live on. We have to remember all who fought and who passed on. We owe it to their memory to protect this right. So to all the activists and the allies and everyone else who supported the marriage equality before it was even popular, thank you. Everything that we enjoy uh, comes from your efforts, and we stand on your shoulders. And it's our responsibility now to reach out to people who might not look like us who don't have the advantages some of us have, who come from less stable environments, who are marginalized, to make sure that there's room for them at the table as well. And again, I cannot thank Clerk Yarborough enough for being so supportive. 
it's when I started talking to some of you people that I realized just how much of an ally she was. So thank you, Claire, and thank all of you. Wow, well now we have some time to mix and mingle and take some pictures and celebrate. Thank you all for coming today. Um, 15,000 is right around the corner and we'll be blasting it out there for all of you to know when it happens, okay? Thank you. <laughs>